Like a new Linux file system and other Unix-like file systems can be thought of as a hierarchy of directories starting at slash, which is usually referred to as root. For this example, files in a directory show up as squares with the height based on the file size. I find it helpful to think of a directory as a location or a room. Every directory in our current location shows up as a hallway leading to its own room. Building this structure, we can show off the GNU Linux file system in 3D space. Here at the start, or root, we have several essential directories and we'll go over them one at a time, but before that, let's talk about your current working directory. When navigating the command line, your console will have a location just like I have a location walking around this 3D file system. Right now, my current working directory is slash or root. As we move around this virtual file system, I'll show you the relevant commands needed to navigate the command line as well. To view your current working directory, run pwd. In modern Linux, this stands for print current working directory. While originally in Unix, this command was read as present working directory. Both mean and do the same thing. Your current working directory is also often shown in your command line prompt. Now that we know the command line has a working directory location, let's go over what lives in root. The boot directory contains all the files necessary for your computer to start up. In most cases, this means a grub config file and some UEFI stuff. Walking down hallways or changing directories is done with the cd command from the shell. To use this, run cd space a directory name that's in your current directory. This will change your location to the specified directory. If you're feeling really zesty, cd space dot slash the directory name. The dot slash in the previous command means from where I am right now. Remember, where you are right now can be viewed with the pwd command. When you want to go back a directory, or in this case a room, the command can be done relatively, which means from where I am right now, or it can be done absolutely, which means relative to root. Absolute paths are also sometimes called the full name. To get back to root with a relative path, the command is cd space dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash. Each dot dot slash means back one directory for my pwd. The absolute way to get back to root is always cd space slash. If you want to change directory to the boot file with an absolute path, the command would be cd space slash boot. All absolute paths or full names start with a slash and work their way down. From here on out, I'll show you the absolute path and the relative paths for each command. Hopefully, that will give you an idea when to use each. Next up, slash usr, or user. Slash user is generally the largest directory on a newly installed system. It's used to store application programs. However, all data here should contain unchanging static data. Situations like booting a live USB can cause USR to be mounted read-only. This is where slash var helps out by always being writable. Among the various subdirectories in var is slash var cache, which contains cache data from application programs. Var lib contains dynamic data libraries and files. Var log contains various log files. Var spool contains mail, news, and printer queues. As you can see, var complements the programs and user by giving them a place to write data. Another important directory and root is called bin. Bin contains all the ready-to-run programs that are needed to start the system. It contains all the basic command line tools needed to repair an OS in case it breaks. Here you'll find the shells like bash and a lot of the shell commands like ls, cd, tar, kill, and vi. The program stored here can be run by both the root administrative user and by ordinary users. SBIN is a lot like BIN, except its contents are administrative tools that are only available for the root administrative user. Slash home contains the user's home directory. You can expect to see a folder here for every user on the system. This folder is where a file browser or command line shell would open for a typical user. It contains all the standard desktop, documents, music type folders you would expect to see as a regular desktop user. On the command line, the home folder is often shortened to a tilde. This means the same thing as slash home slash username. The administrative user on GNU Linux is called root, not to be confused with slash, which is also called root. The admin root user's home directory is the only one not in slash home, and instead is stored in slash itself. This is more or less the same idea as the directory we just went over, except this is owned by the admin user root. A few directories are 100% dynamically generated by the kernel. They use a special magic file system created on startup that doesn't actually exist on a hard drive. Mainly, these are dev, proc, and sys. Slash dev contains device nodes, which gives user space applications access to your device drivers in your OS's running kernel. Or simply put, the kernel makes files that represent hardware on the system. A good example is how the kernel creates a file called dev sda for the first hard drive on the system. If you plug in a second hard drive on the system, the kernel will create a file called slash dev slash sdb. There are, however, several dev entries that don't correspond to hardware devices. 
For example, dev null, dev random, and dev tty don't actually point at physical hardware but are virtual devices. Proc and sys have a lot of crossover, but proc mostly shows you information about running processes, while sys allows you to manipulate the running kernel. Slash mnt or mount should be empty. It's the recommended place for mounting temporary storage devices like USB thumb drives or CD-ROMs. Media is the automatic MNT. If you plug in a thumb drive while you're running a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE, it would likely get auto-mounted under media. Slash ETC or Etsy is where most of the system configuration files are stored. The hard drives that get mounted on boot and where they get mounted to is stored in Etsy FS tab. The DNS servers used by the system is stored in etsyresolve.conf. If you install a service like Apache Web Server, its configuration files will likely end up in Etsy as well. Lastly, let's talk about temp. This is a place applications can write data to that's temporary. For example, an Office app might write your document to slash TMP when you make edits, then save those edits to a different location when you save the document. The data in slash TMP is automatically removed when your system is rebooted. Thanks for making it to the end of this deep dive on the GNU Linux file system. Thanks for watching. Bye.